Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Stars Peter Sellers, George C. Scott, and Sterling Hayden. Written by Stanley Kubrick and Peter George, and directed by Stanley Kubrick. It was released on Blu-ray June 16th, 2009, and runs 95 minutes. Dr. Strangelove takes place during the paranoia-fueled Red Scare of the late 40s into the 50s. A fleet of B-52 bombers stay airborne 24-7, two hours outside their Russian targets, to ensure quick retaliation in case of a Russian attack. Footage of a mid-air fueling during the credit sequence essentially tells the audience how the planes are able to achieve this. War crazy and just plain crazy General Jack Ripper, out of the blue orders the bombers to attack their targets, seals off his military base, tells all the troops not to trust each other, has all radios on the base confiscated, and orders that anyone approaching the base is to be fired upon. When second in command, Captain Lionel Mandrake, finds a missed portable radio and hears a civilian broadcast, he brings it to General Ripper, stating that there wouldn't be music during a national emergency, and that the planes should be recalled. But General Ripper isn't going to go for that, and he's the only one who knows the recall code. When President Muffley, played by Peter Sellers, orders the base to be taken, a large shootout ensues, with the soldiers defending the base ultimately surrendering. As General Ripper believes it's the Russians invading and coming for him, he's not willing to be taken alive leaving Captain Mandrake to figure out the three-digit recall code and contact the president. Meanwhile, in the war room, an invited Russian ambassador, the president, and Joint Chief of Staff General Buck Turgidson, played by George C. Scott, whose character is just as paranoid as General Ripper, just not crazy, try defusing the situation on their end. President Muffley calls Russian Premier Dmitry Kissov, to explain that one of his generals went a little funny in the head and ordered the planes to attack his country. The conversation he has with the drunk Soviet premier is hilarious. You don't actually get to hear the other party, just Peter Sellers doing his bit on the one end, forcing you to imagine and interpret what Kissoff is saying, and picturing him being drunk only makes it even more funny. Soon after, the Russian ambassador reveals that they've built a nuclear deterrent no one knows about, called the Doomsday Machine, set to go off automatically and destroy all life on the planet if Russia is attacked. Dr. Strangelove gets upset, proclaiming that the whole idea of a deterrent is that everyone knows about it. Why didn't you tell anyone about it? To which the ambassador replies, it was to be announced at the party congress on Monday, as you know the premier loves surprises. We also spend time with a crew inside one of the cramped B-52 bombers as they get the order and prepare for the attack. I don't know much about B-52 bombers, but the interior and everything they do seems authentic. Stanley Kubrick was obsessed with the detail and research, so I don't doubt the authenticity of the plane. And they build tension via countdowns during a scene where a missile is tailing them and when the pilot tries getting the bay doors open as they approach their target, counting down the distance in meters. The model plane in front of the video screen, on the other hand, looks low budget and almost comical in itself. I was unaware of Peter Sellers when I first saw the film and had no idea he was playing three different characters. Not only three different characters, but three different types of comedy. The stern yet gentle almost nervous characteristics of President Muffley, the sophisticated, well-spoken British Captain Mandrake, and the over-the-top, over-animated German Dr. Strangelove. He's a joy to watch and does a masterful job in all three roles. Sterling Hayden also does an amazing job as the psychotic, hyper-paranoid General Ripper. He'll really convince you that this character has really gone nuts and has this stare bold enough to scare you. But besides the paranoia, I really have to wonder if he really was all that crazy. Ripper suddenly brings up a relevant topic to Mandrake while he goes on about his bodily fluids and his life essence. He goes on about fluoridation of the water supply, suspecting the Russians of poisoning the water. He brings up a couple good points for a crazy person. 
you don't have to suspect other countries of fluoridating the water supply. And George C. Scott does a great job as the childish, goofy, paranoid General Turgidson. The quiet, one-on-one -on -one conversations between General Turgidson and President Muffley, as well as General Ripper and Captain Mandrake, I found both interesting and compelling. Everything else is excellent, too. The film being in black and white fits perfectly. The story, while funny in its own way, is by no means colorful. The claustrophobia of the B-52 is effective and a nice contrast to the large, sprawling war room, while General Ripper's office and the military base rounding out as a medium-sized location. It's also funny the movie is named Dr. Strangelove when he's the character who's in it the least. My only beef has nothing to do with the movie itself. It's that they didn't include the theatrical trailer on the Blu-ray. It's really uniquely put together and quite funny on its own. So much so, I'm kind of bummed out they didn't include it. Overall, Dr. Strangelove is a strange and unique film, both a black comedy and a frightening scenario using authentic footage of planes and H-bomb explosions, at the same time poking fun at governments, armies, and how crazy and war-hungry these people really are. I really don't like re-watching a movie without a few months in between, but for this movie, I think I could make an exception. I really love this film. A Kubrick masterpiece. 10 out of 10.